Hi there, it's Mark here at MAS Audio and today we're doing another video, another car install. Today we're doing a Mercedes and this has already had an aftermarket system put in um, but it's uh, pretty poor quality. Um, so we are putting in an Extrons, there you go, there's the details. And there's the barcode there with the numbers on. Right, so yeah, here we go. These are all the bits we've got. So we've got a GPS aerial, aerial adapter, various wires and connectors, microphone, Wi-Fi antenna, USB leads, and the car connecting loom with the CAN bus adapter. Right, let's get started. First things first, we're going to need to remove this little cover. clips out the way. The next piece, this trim lifts up out the way. Just open that pocket out of the way. Just get your hands in there and just carefully pry that up. It just comes out. And there we go. It's that piece out the way. Put it on the back seat so it's not in our way when we're trying to work. Now we do need to move the uh, the gear lever back, so we need to turn the ignition on. Now we've got the gear lever moved out of the way. We just need to pop this panel out. Just a couple of clips that hold it. And just prise it out. And then this little plug unplugs. Just need to unplug that. <clears throat> Next, got a couple of screws that hold this in place. Undo the connectors. And those screws are in the bottom of this panel here. Now for removing the vents. You've got two little prongs you have to lever out of the way in here. These ones look like they've already been broken though. So I'm not sure what we're going to do there. So you need to move it so you can prise that over and just flip them down. Uh, there's no screws in there but I think they've just got the clips instead. So we'll go have a look in the bottom one, and the bottom clip is missing, that's been snapped off. So that's really going to be a pain. This is actually a bit loose already, the panels, it's all previously been worked on and this panel's just broken, all the clips are a bit broken. We'll see if we can find a way just to fix that, but that's been damaged. So there's a screw in the bottom. And they normally stay captive in those gaps, so you shouldn't have any problem dropping them or losing them. They normally stay attached to the vent. Screwdriver in there and prise it down. 
same with that side, and then one there in the end. It just releases the little grip tabs. You can see these tabs here and here, and the screws there. They'll stay captive in there. They don't need to come out. Makes it easier to put it back in if you don't take those out. <clears throat> Let's put the car back into park. And remove the key. So the ignition's now off, so we can safely unplug this. <clears throat> but just keep it to hand in case you need to turn the ignition on to move that gear lever again. Just remember not to turn the ignition on with that unplugged or you will trigger an airbag fault. Right, so that's all of the screws out. Now it'd be the exact same procedure if it was a factory fitted unit originally, um, because it bolts in exactly the same way. This is just an adapter frame uh, that fills the gap, but it would be exactly the same procedure. So as you can see, this aftermarket Thing has got a lot of wires plugged in here so we'll just go ahead and remove all of this right. that's the old head unit out of the way just pop that in the back <laughs> so we've got a steering wheel control adapter more wiring harnesses that have been joined together by the looks of it. It's a bit of a mess there, I don't know what all that's all about and why they did that, because that's the same thing. Because that is the same plug. Maybe it wasn't long enough. I don't know, they've just added extra bits on, I don't know what they've been doing there. But we'll get rid of that lot as well, we don't want that. For this unit we're fitting, we don't want any wiring adapters, so all of this stuff, all of these steering wheel controls and everything can all be scrapped out. We don't need any of that. Right, so here is the original car's wiring harness, aerial plugs, you don't want the, um, the brownie coloured one, you want the black one for your aerial. Now the radio we're putting in already comes with a, a, a FACRA aerial connector, just there. Um, we did buy an adapter in case it had the older style, so you can buy this adapter. You've just got the older DIN plug and changes to a FACRA plug. But we're not going to need that, so I can put that back into stock. Now, this is the GPS aerial that was installed. I just want to show you this though, because this is funny. Um, <clears throat> when the person installed this one, they put the GPS aerial up there. Now it's not supposed to go there because this this is what receives the signal from the satellite so the signals are basically bouncing up back up for this to work it shouldn't be that way up it should be faced that bit should be facing upwards so someone stuck it upside down on the screen so that was a rather um, <laughs> a rather strange way of doing things handily in the glove box on this car you've got this 
little pop out panel here so we're just going to pop this out and run the USBs through there Right, so we've now got uh, the USBs are in the glove box here, running through that hole we just made with that little pop out clip and we've got them down here ready to plug into the stereo head unit. So we'll move on to the next piece. Next piece we're just going to fit this Wi-Fi antenna. So all we're going to do is we're going to run this Wi-Fi antenna, we just run it straight down under the glove box and you can get hold of it if you've taken that bottom panel out already like I did and we're just going to tuck this down behind the carpet so it'll give a good Wi-Fi range for glove box or this armrest pocket um, so you'll, yeah, you'll get a good signal with it just there. Right, now, one little tip, once you've installed one of these um, on some of these cars, you know, it doesn't apply to this one, but a lot of the Extrons do have this, where the plug, that SMA or SMB connector, whichever one it happens to be, <clears throat> now the GPS aerial and the Wi-Fi antenna one are the same connector. And what you can do, if you're not careful, is you'll install your antennas and hide it all, tidy all your wires up and then you go, ah, which one was which? So, all you want to do is get a bit of uh, electrical tape and then wrap it around one or the other. So, in my, this instance, it's the Wi-Fi antenna. Just put that bit of tape on it before you do the next one and you'll know which one's which. Luckily, we don't have that problem because this one actually has a FACRA plug. So we wouldn't need to worry about that anyway. I think what we're probably going to do is do it how it should have been done in the first place. And we're going to put it in the corner, just here. Uh, you can see I've just popped it down inside this trim and it's actually sitting underneath it now just there so it's only a very thin layer so it pops straight in and underneath it and that's the cable hidden and the GPS aerial sat there in the corner not stuck to the glass like the other one was upside down <laughs> which was a bit comedy so now we'll just run that underneath the glove box to our stereo right so we've hidden the cable uh, underneath the glove box and it won't fall down and get in the way of people's feet once that trim panel that goes under there is fitted back in. Um, now one tip, when you remove the side trims out of this side of the dashboard, I'll just show you. So where we've pulled this trim, trim panel off, we can tuck and hide this wire. And I'll use a cable tidy just to hide the wire in here 
you can just stick the wires in there out the way all the excess cable that you're left with so it's a good idea to wrap it up and just tuck it here and then you don't crowd the area behind the radio with loads of wires uh, you want to keep that the wires at this end as minimal as possible um, so when you put the radio in it's not snagging or trapped or won't fit because there's loads of wires all stuck behind the dashboard there so that's a good tip to remember and that goes for any installation Now, just going to have a look at the wiring, because there is one important bit to note on these, and that's the position of the CAN bus wires. Now on here, the two CAN bus wires are these two brown ones, and there's a gap in between them. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you've got one at the top, then an empty gap and then the next one below it. Sometimes the order of that is different. You can see on the loom that's supplied with the car, uh, with the car stereo, sorry, we have got those plugs. It's these pins, and then all three are there. It gives you a set of optional plugs. So, <coughs> You've got one plug or the other plug, which will make your CAN bus signals work. So all you need to do is figure out which one of those wires you don't need. Now in our case, it's the middle one. So we need the wire that's got one from the top and then one from the bottom. And what I'll do, I'll just remove this <coughs> bit of sticky that they've stuck on here. So we can see it better. <clears throat> and these are the wires I'm talking about. So we want to get rid of the middle one and we want that one. So whichever one those plugs go to, which as you can see, this one's got the middle wire going to it, so get rid of that one. This one has got the join from the top one and it's got the link coming from the bottom one so this is the wire that we need so that one labelled B1 plugs into this end <coughs> and that's it that's ready another quick tip as well got your auxiliary input here which is on the bottom of this quad lock connector if you look when you're going to plug it in, sorry, I'm sticking my head in the way again. Now this one doesn't have anything plugged in there, so that's not going to be used. So because we know we don't need that, we don't need its corresponding aux cable. So out of these leads, we do need that one because it's got the microphone. So we'll plug this one. If you look on the back, you've got a chart that tells you which one's which, if you're unsure. So you can just check which one has got your microphone. In this case, microphone, external microphone is labeled G. <clears throat> and G is the second one from the end. So we'll plug that one in. And of course it will fit. They're all different sizes anyway. But it's nice to just double check if you're unsure. So we'll leave that one in there for the microphone. Next one, we've got amplifier and antenna power cables. And then video out, rear out, for it rear out, front out, sub out. I don't know if we're going to need that one. Um, has this one got a power point for an aerial? Let's have a look. With that plugged in, the blue wire connects to this black wire, so that's going to be its amplifier remote control. 
Right, okay, so the other thing we need to check, because this loom has got the power output for the aerial connector, we've got this blue wire, which does correspond to a cable on this block, which is the black wire, so that would have been our antenna remote. So this needs to be connected to one of the blue ones. So we'll use the amp connector one, because it says amp on that one. I'll just put some tape around that, because sometimes those little uh, covers can come off. And then there's 12 volt on there, you don't want it shorting out on anything metal of the case of the stereo or anything like that. So. Let's plug these into the back of the radio. And again, if we check our plug, you've got the amp and antenna control on this radio. It's labelled as part or socket E, which is the bottom end one. Um, now it'll only fit one of those because one of them, the other one is tiny. So there we go. There's how we're looking so far. We've got our power block connector with its CAN bus adapter. That cable connected to the right one that matches the vehicle loom. This we don't need. The antenna or amplifier connector is connected to that block which plugs in. Those are not used because they're line outputs for ampl other amplifiers or subwoofer. And then this one's connected in with all the camera adapters, although the only one we actually need is the microphone. <coughs> and the last one that's here is the auxiliary in and video in. So we won't be needing that one because there's nothing that connects to it. So we'll put that back in the box and leave it for the customer in case they want it in the future. Now, the last piece I need to do is the microphone. And seeing as I'm doing that on that side, I'm going to reassemble this side of the car. Okay, so I've just uh, fitted the microphone up here. Now, this is an optional microphone um, because the stereos do have a built-in one, um, but sometimes they're not very good, so it's always uh, a good tip to add an extra one. Um, and all I've done is just just tuck the wire in. You can just see, and just tuck the wire in along there, remove the rubber from the side of the door, and all we'll do is we'll tuck this wire in and down, run it down, and hide it. Big van driving past. So yeah, so we'll run the cable down, hide it under there, and then just put the rubber panel back, which will hide the cable. Nice, neat install. You won't see any wires. Um, also, this saves having to pull these panels off. In these cases, you can just tuck the wire along and down there. So, little top tip for you guys out there. So we're just going to take out the lower panel. This lower panel underneath the steering wheel. removed and dropped down this lower panel under the steering column. Uh, three torque screws and it just comes down. I won't fully remove it because the bonnet release and a bunch of other cables are attached to it. So we're just going to run the microphone cable underneath and then we'll do this exactly the same as we did with the GPS antenna and uh, <coughs> we'll hide the excess cable in the end plate area as well. You never need to run cables. Have a, uh, a feeder cable handy and some tape. Poke this down 
through where the cable is going to come from. Like so. <clears throat> then we'll tape our microphone lead to it and pull it back through. So it saves you uh, skimming your knuckles and cutting your fingers when you're trying to feed cables up to where the radio is going to go. Is our microphone cable so I'll just tidy the rest up underneath and uh, get that out of the way Okay, so we're nearing completion now. We've got the microphone installed and the wires all tucked and hidden away. We've got the GPS aerial down here and all the wires are tucked in, tied away in this side panel underneath here. Just got to fit this panel back underneath to keep that wire secure and out of the way. All the wires are open here. So we've got GPS, the Wi-Fi, the USBs, the microphone for the uh, Bluetooth, the rest of the plugs are connected to the back of the head unit and the USBs and that in here as we showed earlier. So we'll just fit this panel back on. Now when you put your screws back in, just make sure you're not trapping any of those cables that you've fed underneath there. Okay, now we're ready for the final stages. We've got all our wires where they need to be. Our connecting cables, our aerials. Now all we've got to do is plug them onto the back of the head unit. USBs. Again you can look at the diagram on top. So we need points B and C, which are the two top middle ones. Both different sizes so you can't get it wrong. So that's that. And we've got our original radio antenna. And the, no, this, uh, there's the Wi-Fi antenna, we'll do that one first. Because that was the easiest one to get to. It just screws in place. Now, in the original wiring harness, we've got the aerial adapter. And we'll plug that one in next. Push them firmly until they click, that means the little tab has locked in place. Uh, GPS aerial next. Let's get that one to go in. And that's it, that snaps in place. And our microphone and plugs into our loom at the back, Just snaps into place again. reach down I'll just grab a little bit of tape just to hold that 
in place. It did snap into place, but I always like to put an extra bit of just securing electrical tape around there, just to make sure that isn't gonna come off. Okay, now just check everything is where you need it to be. The final one is the main power block. Always a good idea to leave that one till last. And make sure you've got everything else connected first. Finally, you can plug in the main factory connector. Once you've got everything pushed down and relatively out of the way, you push the head unit in. Now luckily these Mercedes have got a gap at the bottom, so you can reach in and grab any awkward cables and pull them down out of the way as well. And this is what I meant earlier about trying not to have too many wires behind the radio they will snag up on them. At the moment we're getting caught up on that big uh, power block connector so I'm going to have to find a way to get that down and out of the way. <clears throat> now I've noticed there's a plastic piece here which is getting in the way. The original radio would have had a notch cut out for that. It's getting pushed in the wrong direction, so I just need to get some cutters to remove that piece. There we go, it's only a little piece. But little things get in the way sometimes. And there we go, she sits nice and flush now. Now before you do any power up or testing, you want to make sure you plug this back in. Okay, so now we've got this far, we will turn on the ignition. So we're just waiting for the machine to load up. And there we have it. So let's go to the radio. Sounds good. Okay, let's try our steering wheel buttons. Volume up and down. Phone button goes to the Bluetooth screen, that's awesome. Look at that. So, this being an Android stereo, we've got our Android apps. Excellent. We've even got YouTube. Maybe we'll save our channel on there for the customer to watch. Right, fantastic. And when we take the key out, the unit shuts down. Brilliant, that's the test completed. That's all working brilliantly. 
Right, okay, I've reassembled the heat vents and tilted those up to access the screws, which are still in there. I managed to clip that back on and repair those clips. A couple of them are broken, but uh, it holds on sufficiently. So we'll just clip that back in. Okay, and that just clips into place. Okay, so we've tightened up our screws. That's nice and secure. And you just flip these panels back down for normal operation. And there we go. Right, now I need to go around to the driver's side and move the gear stick. Right, so as I mentioned before, make sure that this is plugged in before you do turn on the ignition to move the gear stick to install anything. So it's always good practice to do the top section first. Now we've just got to plug in our heater control panel. So we'll switch our ignition back off. And this next part is our ashtray. Don't forget to plug in your 12 volt supply, which is this plug. And this plugs in, doesn't plug in in and out, it plugs on the side. It just snaps into place. And just feed that in, click it down, that's in place. final section. Make sure you put your little slidey tray lid where it isn't going to get caught up. Pour the, the gear piece through there. Slide that back into position there. And then just clicks into place. Test your sliding door still works. Right, and that is it. That is the install complete. They're normally set to uh, China time, so you just change that. <clears throat> so this one you can add the OBD Bluetooth module, and then you can have talk running. You've got a YouTube app, you can change your steering wheel buttons and what they do. You can add the optional DAB USB to this car. Also you can add the tire pressure monitoring system from Extrons for this car. And there's all your, just your general apps, gallery, file browser. You can add a front camera as well if you need to. Obviously that won't see anything, so. <laughs> and that's it. Job is complete. So just to recap, we've installed that head unit. The steering wheel buttons work. It looks like it's a factory original stereo similar design to OEM 
got our GPS area, we fitted in the corner there. We removed that one that was up there, there's still some sticky bits of pad left, we'll get that off. Microphone this side, just an extra microphone. In most cases, both will still pick up. One doesn't override the other, so it will pick up the sound from that one and this one as well, in some cases. Not all the time, but in some cases. And that's our job complete. So that will power down. <clears throat> and that is a complete install of this Extrons unit. And uh, we'll give the details of the unit in the, co in the uh, details below. Uh, the model number and everything if you're interested in buying one of these. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon on the next video. Cheers. Bye.